Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and the new discovery that suggests that the halo located around the galaxy is ridiculously hot. Much, much hotter than we originally imagined. So let's talk about this and welcome to Adama. In the last few years, we've made quite a lot of really exciting discoveries when it came to sort of finding places in the universe that are way, way hotter than we originally anticipated them to be. The most famous example is, of course, the area around our own sun known as the solar corona that's approximately 2 million degrees Kelvin, which is several hundred times higher than the surface temperature of the sun itself. And we're still kind of not entirely sure what causes the solar corona to be so hot, but we know that it has something to do with the electromagnetic interactions and very unusual explosions, electromagnetic explosions, on the surface of the sun. So electromagnetism in this case does play a huge role. Also, not so long ago, we discovered that the interstellar space, which both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are currently traveling across, where the temperature also suddenly jumps up quite dramatically, by like a huge value. It's in thousands of degrees, and I believe it was about 55,000 Fahrenheit or about 30,000 Celsius when the probe was able to measure the temperature here. So back when I made the video about this, I literally called this the so-called interstellar firewall, because it's basically like fire in the middle of nowhere. But now it looks like we have something similar going on with the galaxy itself. And it's all located in the so-called halo, which here in this galaxy, known as the Sombrero Galaxy, it's quite easily visible. But in the Milky Way Galaxy, it's not as obvious. In our galaxy, the halo is actually something that we're still kind of learning about, but we believe it was created during a major galactic collision, most likely between the Milky Way Galaxy and an ancient galaxy we currently refer to as the Gaia Sausage. Yeah, it's a pretty funny name. There are currently no actual visible remnants of Gaia Sausage, except for occasional global clusters, but we believe the main part is somewhere in the vicinity of the Large Magellanic Cloud right here. And we also believe that this right here, the global cluster known as NGC 2808, used to be its main inner core where possibly its uh, black hole is located as well. So when the Gaia Sausage and the ancient Milky Way collided, the actual shuffling of the material and all sorts of in gravitational interactions between stars and global clusters produce the halo that we have today. At least that's the current assumption. It might change in a few years, but for now that's how we think it was created. Here's a somewhat simplified version of how all of this looks if you were to look at the actual structure, with the center of the galaxy being right here. This is the inner central part of the galaxy, the so-called galactic bulge. We have the disk here and the halo is pretty much kind of all over the place around the galaxy. A much more detailed version was actually produced by this wonderful person, Matthias Schmidt, for his master's degree. And here you can actually see that halo itself even has two parts in it, with potentially both parts being produced by different collisions. And now, some of the recent discoveries coming from the Ohio State University, based on several different observations and also several different papers, suggest that the galactic halo of our own galaxy is even hotter than we initially thought. Specifically, it's like 10 times hotter. Here we're talking about 10 million degrees Kelvin, or essentially 18 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 5 times higher than the solar corona that I've previously mentioned. And although at first, even though the scientists thought that maybe it's some sort of a fluke, maybe they're actually reading some kind of an invisible phenomenon and they're looking at something else that's causing these high temperatures, they decided to confirm these results by looking at the galaxy known as NGC 3221 and wanted to see if it also has these unusual observations. And it just so happens that the halo of this distant galaxy also has extremely high temperatures as well. This galaxy is about 200 million light years away from us, but it's extremely similar to the Milky Way galaxy, so that's why the scientists decided to use this as a kind of a comparison just to see if maybe there was a different explanation to what they're observing. But turns out that halos are extremely hot, and right now we don't really know why. They've also observed these results in four different directions using the so-called Subaru telescope, and all the results were relatively similar excessively high temperatures of the galactic halo. But before we go on, I actually wanted to clarify something in regards to temperature, because our understanding of temperature here on planet Earth is somewhat different from what temperature really means scientifically. 
Our understanding of temperature is more related to the idea of heat exchange. Heat exchange that comes through the air itself. It really actually shouldn't even be cold temperature because that's not really the right term to use here. The scientific idea of temperature relates to the vibrational energy of molecules, or really any particles in that case. And when these molecules or these particles vibrate faster, that means they have more temperature. Whereas when their vibrational energy decreases and they start vibrating slower, they decrease in temperature. And this is kind of important to understand because even though the temperature here is practically in millions of degrees, you're not actually going to suddenly burn into a crisp when you enter this area. Because the actual density of the material here is very, very thin. It's basically what we would call vacuum, so the energy transfer here is very minimal. And I guess a good example here from actual real life experience would be, for example, water and air of the same temperature. For example, most people can still kind of feel okay in a room that's about 50 degrees Celsius. They're not going to be able to do it for a very long time, but you can walk through a room and not really feel too burned. However, try to place your hand in a water that's 50 degrees Celsius in temperature and you're going to feel a lot of discomfort and a lot of pain. The 50 degrees Celsius water feels much, much, much hotter than 50 degrees Celsius air. And that's essentially related to how heat exchange works. Although that's a very, very simplified version of all of this and it does involve a lot more thermodynamics. So using a similar analogy, here we have something that's millions of degrees in temperature, but the density is extremely low. So even though you might be flying through this in your spacecraft, it's not going to suddenly melt because of the temperatures involved. Unless, of course, for some reason the density increases and we suddenly find ourselves in some sort of a much denser nebula-like cloud, which might possess enough density to actually start affecting the spacecraft. But anyway, that's sort of beyond the scope of this video, but the idea here is that our understanding of temperature and what temperature means in science is actually slightly different. But I guess a more important question here is, why is this happening? Why is the temperature here about 10 times higher than we initially thought? Well, one potential answer might be similar to how we were able to answer the mystery of the solar corona. There might be some sort of a really strong magnetic field that's causing all of these effects. We don't really know exactly what's causing it, but it's a very interesting phenomenon that definitely needs to be investigated in order for us to try to understand how our galaxy evolved, how it changes over time, and most importantly, how it's going to change in the next few decades, in the next few hundreds of years, and possibly in the next few thousands of years, assuming that we're still around. All of this is actually kind of important for our own survival in a sense, because if all of this was produced by some sort of a really deadly event, we might want to know about this, right? But anyway, once we discover more about the reasons behind this really high temperature in the galactic halo, or once we learn something else about the Milky Way, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon, and maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.